Welcome to Nasset News. I'm Krista Walsh. Let's get into today's announcements. Looking for some of those community service hours? Brewster Rec is looking for help with the youth basketball. There's a Cape Wide Art Contest benefiting the Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month in February for all high school students. You can sign up until the end of January. In the new year, it's a great time to sign up for a club. There are many opportunities, including the Key Club, Mountain Biking Club, and the Art Club. And now for today's lineup. Our top story will be by Emma Burke, Sports by Sammy Mays and Lips and Cole Jacket, Things to Do by Lipsky Joe and Vermel Brown. Today's health tip will be done by Artie O'Neill and Doug Bazzio. Political Spotlight by Brian Evans, Fashion Tip by Rachel Moore. Student Council will be done by Amanda Spence. Today's Talent Search by Camden Fitcher and Gus Hayward. And the High Five by J.P. Labarge and Andrew Sanderval. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year. I'm Krista Walsh. Hi, I'm Emma Burke and this is Lula Brown. And today we are going to be talking about the top story of the week and how students at Nauset spent their holiday vacation. So Winslow, what did you do over break? I I celebrated a big Christmas meal with my family and cousins and we had like turkey and lamb and stuff like that. That sounds good. And is that a tradition? Like one of your favorites? Yeah. We like usually celebrate it like on Christmas Eve. So the holiday that you celebrate is Christmas, I'm assuming? Yeah. Do you do, do anything for New Year's? Mm, we we like get together and watch a Powerball drop. Nice, that sounds very awesome. And I hope that your 10 days off from school was full of fun and relaxation. Thank you. Hi, I'm a version of this. Ansel Duran. And he's going to be talking about how his holiday break goes. So Ansel, what did you do over break? Uh, I just really stayed home, helped out the fam. That's about it. Sounds good. What holidays do you celebrate? Uh, I celebrate Christmas. Uh, New Year's, that's always fun. Uh, yeah. Sounds great. Um, what did you do on New Year's? On New Year's, I headed to Chatty. It was freezing there. It's like single digits, but I still went. I went true. Me and my friends went out there. Uh, we went 12 o'clock to see the car drop. It's pretty good. I wish I went to Chatham, but too cold for me. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ruben Burke, and this is... Ryan Nettahan. And Gabe Coelho. And today we are going to be talking about how their holiday break was. So guys, what did you do over break? I, Gabe and I played a lot of hockey. We had practice in a couple of games. <laughs> yeah, we were just tilling it up on the pond. Nice, guys. Um, what holidays do you guys celebrate? Celebrate Christmas. I celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah. Did you do anything special for those holidays? No, we just did the normal thing. You know? We just hung out with our family and went to our cousin's house. Had a good time, yeah. All right, well, thank you for letting us interview you, and I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. Thank you, you too. Hi, I'm Cordelia Yunlin, and I'm here with... Ryan Redahan. Delaney Smith. And we're going to be asking them about their winter vacation. So, what did you guys do? Not much. Just chilled at home, played some pond puck with my friends. What was your favorite part of vacation? Um, sleeping. Hi, I'm here with Ava Redahan and Sydney Nickerson. Today we're going to be talking about their winter vacation. What holidays do you guys celebrate? Christmas. Christmas. What's your favorite holiday tradition? <laughs> Spending time with my family. <laughs> Opening presents. <laughs> okay. What was your favorite part of your vacation? I didn't have but I liked all of it. That's good. Thank Me you. Too. Hi, I'm Emma Burke and I'm here with... Kurt Thomas. <laughs> Sean Clayton. And we're going to be talking about how their holiday break was. So guys, what holiday do you celebrate? Uh, Christmas. Christmas. Did you do anything special? Uh, went over the vents. Pretty Is much. Is that fun. what you did all break? Yeah. <laughs> Hang out with the vents. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, thank you guys. Thanks for watching. This has been the top story. And Cordelia, something that I really enjoyed about this holiday break was I got to see my family and spend quality time with them. And it's nice because I usually only get to see them a few times a year. So that I visited my family in Maryland that I never get to see. That sounds great. I'm Emma Burke and I'm Cordelia Youngling. Thank you. Hi, I'm Amanda Spence and welcome to the Student Council Report. Thank you to the entire Student Council and President Jack Orr for the Spirit Week before the holiday vacation. 
It was a lot of fun and great to see everyone get involved. On January 11th, members of the Student Council will attend a conference in Wareham, and by the end of the month, the club will turn in their Book of Excellence to the state. Good luck, Student Council, and thank you for your hard work. I'm Amanda Spence. Hello, I'm Brian Evans, and I'm here to tell you about your weekly political spotlight. All right, so we're going to start off with some international news. Uh, we're going to talk about the controversial uh, communist uh, North Korean regime and the controversial uh, Ayatollah uh, Iranian regime. We're going to start off by saying that North Korea called out the U.S. by saying that um, uh, Kim Jong-un has a nuclear button on his desk at all times, so Trump fired back by saying he also has a uh, nu nuclear button on his desk at all times, and he says that his is um, uh, much bigger and more powerful than his, so you know, that's increasing world tensions a bit. And then um, uh, he also talked about the Iranian revolution, which is happening at the moment right now. Uh, he's in full support of it. He says that the people of Iran are finally acting against the brutal and corrupt Iranian regime. So. Now we're going to move on from this international and tense news, and we're going to go on to something closer to home. Here in Massachusetts, uh, in the Senate, a former student known as Julian Sear is um, working hard and has been for the past year. Uh, he has faced tough issues that have uh, popped up around the Cape District, uh, such as housing, wastewater, health care costs, fragile environment, uh, and the opioid epidemic. So, uh, a few examples of what he has done include his successful funding for Children's Coves of Barnstable, which is a center for sexually abused children. Um, he gave 50000 to community housing. He gave 40000 for homelessness in Martha's Vineyard. He gave 100000 for Cape Fire and Training Academy. Uh, and he secured $5 million for rebuilding uh, the Cape Tech, which is just something that we really need done here. Uh, and finally, he was able to facilitate transfer of four acres of land in Trove for affordable housing, which is just great for the people who can't afford housing. All right, that has uh, been your political spotlight. I'm Brian Evans, and I hope you have a nice day. Hi, I'm Ardy O'Neill. And I'm Doug Bazaar. With the health tip of the week, this week we'll be talking about the benefits of being kind. Being kind through small acts like holding open a door or carrying someone's groceries, even smiling like someone or giving them a hug, can actually be good for your health. A powerful hormone called oxytocin is released and acts as a neurotransmitter in your brain. It has been found that even small expressions of support between family members and friends will stimulate and the release of oxytocin. It can lower blood pressure, help the digestive system, and decrease intestinal inflammation. According to Dr. David R. Hamilton, quote, Acts of kindness lowers blood pressure and creates emotional warmth, releasing oxytocin. In turn, this can improve overall heart health. Oxytocin increases self-esteem and optimism, which can be helpful when we're in an anxious or shy social situation. Studies have also shown that people feel stronger and more energetic after helping others. Many reports also say people feel calmer and less depressed. Being kind is a win-win for everyone involved. And remember, folks, I'm Ardy O'Neill. And I'm Doug Bazal. With your health tip of the week. Hi, my name is Rachel Moore, and here's the fashion tip of the week. For girls, I know wearing winter outfits is not enough for you. You want to look stylish at the same time. Outfits can be styled in different ways. You could wear a scarf around the neck over your jacket or woolen shirt. Patent leather is trending with pieces from shoes to pants to skirts and coats taking summer stage. The key is to ensure your high shine piece is the hero of your look. If you're scared to dip your toe into this head turning trend, start with shoes and work your way up. Velvet is so popular for winter that you won't want to wear anything but this fabric once the cooler weather hits. Velvet shirts, dresses, and pants are very good. Oversized sweatshirts over t-shirts paired with any pair of pants is a trending look as well. For most guys, the winter months are prime time for retreating into a world of dark, neutral tones. But doing so doesn't have to mean churning the saturation of your wardrobe up to max. Instead, try darker shades of typically summer tones, like moss green. It still counts as a color, but is not offensively bright and, so, and is so easy to wear. 
While olive is common for streetwear like bombers, cargo trouser, trousers, and military shirts, moss green has a smarter appeal, especially when paired with black. Choose this hue from merino sweaters, tailor tailoring, or outwear, <laughs> and pair with your, your usual dark staples. After years of second skin menswear, every expert was going on about the rise of oversized fits, and yet it never quite seemed to catch on until now. Relaxed tr trousers, knitwear with inflated proportions are great examples of what oversized clothes you can wear. You can waterproof your winter wardrobe by investing in a longer raincoat. You may look like a Scandinavian fisherman on the morning commute, but you'll be on trend and keep dry even on extremely drizzly days. If you want to buy into bigger proportions but are unsure if you suit the look, go for a sober color such as grays and blacks and wear it on a day when your confidence is riding high. I'm Rachel Moore and this has been your fashion tip of the week. Happy New Year everyone. Welcome to Things to Do. This is Lipsky and I am Ramon. Okay, so first we go the film part. Um, everyone, welcome to the exhausting school life just after, just af after New Year break. It's getting colder and colder outside. So I guess the best place for you to hang out is going to be the theater. Yeah, trust me. Here are the movies I advise you to choose to watch. First, it's Jumanji, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, I believe you all have watched the original one before. It was released in 1995, and that was a film movie. And it's also kind of my childhood memory, you know. And as the people who watched the new one, they said this one is actually better than the original one. I don't know, you should check out. Especially when you see the cast, you're gonna know this is gonna be a very, very funny movie. I love Kevin Hart a lot. Next, The Greatest Showman. The reason I recommend this movie is because they have Hugh Jackman in it. I love Wolverine, so let's see it. Third, Boyhood. A great movie from my favorite film director, Richard Linklater. He took 12 years to finish this movie. So it's actually a boy growing up from 6 to 18. And I think this movie is, ca is actually a treasure for all Americans. So just to see it, and trust me, you will love it. That's all my film part, and now it's time to Romeo. Thanks, Lipsky. And here are a few things you can do on Cape Cod this week. On Saturday, January 6th at 2 p.m., Talk Explore Cuban Wildlife Culture will be hosted by author Herbert Rafael. He'll be talking about the hidden wonders of Cuba during Cuba Beyond the Tourist Experience at the Horwich Community Center, 100 Oak Street. Tickets will be on sale for $5. Do you want to be thrilled with some sweet, soothing music? If yes, the Cape Cod Museum of Arts, Music, and More concert series will be open with singer, songwriter Jennifer Jackson and bandmate John Nutter Thompson from Austin, Texas, starting 2.30 p.m. on Sunday, January 7th at the Cape Cod Museum of Arts, 60 Hope Lane, Dennis. Tickets are for $15 and $18 for museum members and $150 for the 12-week series. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I'm John Paul Barge here with Charlie Campbell, your high five student of the week. Uh, Charlie, great having you. Good to be here. Thank you. So, 1,000 points. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. Accomplishment. You know, that's you guys. We beat East Hampton too, which is great. Um, it's just a great, great day in your basketball career. Yeah. As a junior doing that, being the eighth player ever, that's pretty awesome. Thank uh, you. So, what, what, were, what were we doing when that happened? <laughs> well, yeah. So I took the lift and I got fouled and I had a foul shot to reach my thumb point and I was pretty nervous at the line and then when it went in it was just a religious one. That's yeah. awesome. And I saw your uh, your buddy Spencer Jones first one go. He was. Congratulate yeah. you. I saw that and Chad was in there too. Yeah. Saying hi. Everyone your whole team was supportive. Uh, and then uh, it was really great seeing you get up all the way. Yeah, it meant a lot. Um, that's awesome. And uh, 
Do you, a thousand is only going to go from here. You have senior year left, freshman year left. Yeah. You guys are looking great. Awesome. Everything going great in school this year? Everything's good. Yeah. Yeah. Should be a fun year, fun season. Nice, nice. Any, uh, what's your favorite class this year? Uh, yeah, chemistry. Nice, nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'll try Congratulations. High five. Welcome to the sports section of this week's Nauset News. I'm Sammy Mays. And I'm Cole Jacket. The Nauset wrestling team traveled to Marshfield December 28th for the annual Marshfield Holiday Tournament. Eli Wilson earned the overall win in the 195-pound division, while Isaiah Honeycutt and Sherman Merrill also had solid performances in their respective weight classes. On the other hand, the Nauset boys hockey team is off to a great start this season and remain undefeated as of this recording. The boys beat Sacred Heart on December 31st in Kingston, 7-0. Goals were scored by Miles Walther, Shane Silva, Nick Dodoli, Austin Hirschberger, Eric Sargison, and Nick Silva. The team kept the winning streak alive on New Year's Day with another win against Sacred Heart when the Saints traveled to Orleans for a Nosset home game. The score was 4-0. The shutout in net was recorded by JT. Playing well was Miles Walther, James Sanderson, and Carrig Weatherup. The Nosset boys and girls swim teams are both undefeated as of this broadcast. According to the coach Justin Bohannon, the most difficult teams this season will be Nantucket and Bridgewater Raynham. In a recent meet against Sacred Heart, the Nosset boys won 88 to 24, while the girls won 86 to 30. Top swimmers in this season include Jack Johnson, Carlisle Nash, Coleman Norton, and Tanner Cornell for the boys, and Hannah Brunel, Gabby Diddley, Molly Rudman, Katie Crowell, and Katie Walters for the girls. Nosset boys lost to Bishop Stang 55-51 to on December 21st, but came out with a big win just a few days later when they beat East Hampton on home December 21st, 73-61. to Charlie Campbell scored his 1,000th point during the game, which certainly was a highlight. When the hit mark, the game was briefly stopped so Campbell could give his dad the game ball. Only a junior, he is the eighth person in the school history to reach the 1,000-point milestone. On December 30th, the team traveled to Mashpee and lost a close, a close one, 62-59. to 59. Charlie Campbell had 27 points, where Abdel Talabi had 13. The girls had a nice win over the holiday vacation, beating Falmouth Academy 60-36 to 36 at home. On December 28th, high, high scores included Regan Meehan and Skylar Sanderson. Tune in next time. This is the Sports Broadcast with Cole Jacket and Sammy Mays.
Hello, my name is Gus Hayward. And I'm Derek Cosmodon. And today, we're here with Carlisle Nash. How are you, Carlisle? I'm wonderful, thanks. How are you? I'm good. How long have you plan been playing this instrument? Um, since I was about 12 in 6th grade. Dude. So what is your inspiration for music? Um, if I hear a really good song, I want to be able to play it. Yeah, that was a really good one. Thank you. So what is the name of the instrument you just played? Um, this is the xylophone. It's not necessarily my favorite, but it has a great sound in my opinion. Do you play any other instruments? Um, I play just about every percussion instrument, from timpanis to the drum set. Um, Does anyone else in your family play any instrument? Uh, yeah, my mother used to play guitar and sometimes plays piano. But Pretty that's cool. it. Pretty cool. Well, thank you for your time, Carlisle. Of course, thank you. Nice You're to welcome. meet you. My name is Gus Hayward. And I'm Derek Kazaban.